What's up, people? Um, funny video today, uh, I think. Beatriz Satan said, would you do Natalia Taylor? No problem, Beatriz. Stop telling me to eat a cheeseburger. I thought that was funny. I think we'll do this one. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Um, so... If you guys have any other recommendations for YouTubers or videos you want me to take a look at, let me know. I'm assuming, Beatrice, you, you wanted me to do this video, judging by the timing. Um, and I happily will. Oh, and she's she's got, so like, I don't know, like, you guys have to understand that when you make videos, nothing is accidental, right? There's like, my, my videos I do in one take, like what you see is what you get. I don't edit anything out. Um, but but this like okay I'm gonna go to Five Guys get a cup like this is basically to show that uh, she just had a hamburger I, I don't know where she's going with this but like come on like I, I don't know whatever anyway let's just watch Stop telling me to eat a cheeseburger. Today on my channel, we will be discussing the true power behind words and how they can affect people's lives. Comments such as eat a cheeseburger or you look anorexic are considered body shaming. So let's talk about it while I eat this cheeseburger. A lot of people seem to be under the wrong impression thinking. I mean, I don't want to like rewind it and see like, did she swallow it? But I kind of, I kind of want to see if she, if she swallowed it or if she just like edited it and cut it out. Uh, so let's take a look here. Stop telling me to Yeah, I didn't see any swallowing. So, um anyway, whatever. I, I can't believe I just did that, but Eat a cheeseburger. Today on my channel, we will be <sighs> discussing the true power behind words and how they can affect people's lives. Comments such as eat a cheeseburger or you look anorexic are considered body shaming. So, let's talk about it. While I eat this cheeseburger, a lot of people seem to be under the wrong impression, thinking that body shaming is something that discriminates against certain body types. But in all actuality, a lot of us have experienced it firsthand. In fact, 94% of teenage girls have reported being body shamed at some point in their life. So what gives? What in the world is causing all of us to believe we should have a say in what someone else's body looks like? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you, the media. The type and amount of food you eat usually controls your figure. Arm yourself with a calorie counter and you may find some surprises. Ever since the birth of the media itself, for generations we've been told how to look. But there's one trick. The models use it. How to lose five pounds in five seconds. And you want to know what it always comes down to? Don't talk too much. I just think it's kind of ironic how this is coming from a, a model. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> it's like... The... I don't want to say the epitome, but like... If anybody is out there is like, I don't want to say a bad example, but if, if gr girls out there who have body issues, body issues, stupid ideas about health and fitness. Oh my God, this video is going to be so, like, I'm going to get so many dislikes on this video. I can already tell. Um, girls who have body issues, right? They have them because of models, like for sure. Like they think the skeleton look is like a good look, right? Number one, they see you on like fashion TV, see you in the magazines, right? You're looking super skinny, you know? It's like they have issues because of you. You know what I mean? I, I, it's very clever to like to come out and like reframe it as this like body shaming thing. Like, oh, I'm also being body shamed, which I, I guess like you know, I guess that is technically body shaming. But you know, shame is a tool that people use to keep other people in line. Um, you know, like evolutionarily like let's pretend we're in the fucking jungle you know and one of your like uh fucking what's it called tribe members is like looking a little skeletonish you know you're gonna be like hey sweetie pie like you're looking a little like skeleton like maybe you should like eat a little bit more meat next time we kill an animal you know what i mean otherwise like you're not going to be able to like participate in the duties of the tribe of course today with the world being what it is the duties of the tribe could be taking pictures of yourself and posting them on social media. So it's a different world. I, I, and I guess that's where this whole like body shaming thing comes into play. But like, has, has not everybody in the world been like body shamed at some point? I've been body shamed. You see me like fucking crying about it and like making a blog about it. No, that shit got me in the gym. Um, 
anyway like what do you expect like nobody wants like we, we want people to look good you know what i mean you're not allowed to express a preference anymore i don't know or too loud sometimes it doesn't go over too well impressing men real men like curves only dogs go for bones a woman without curves is like jeans without pockets you don't know where to put your hands because you know the entire purpose of being a woman is to have hands all over you now like i said body shaming is something that happens to every type of woman and i want to make that extremely clear before we actually get into this video because i'm going to be talking about my own personal experiences with body shaming as a skinny legend that's right i said it skinny legend and i'm not ashamed today i will be discussing with you guys what it was like being bullied growing up actually developing a real eating disorder in my late teens, the types of comments I actually still receive to this day, and how people actually harass me in real life. I hope this video helps someone out there that might be going through this. Growing up, I was bullied Okay, let's just hear this. ...for a lot of things. A lot of people thought I was weird. Sometimes I would show up to school in these outrageous outfits because I was always experimenting with my own fashion. I just wasn't like other people. But by far, the number one thing that made me the most self-conscious. My curves never came in. All of my friends had started wearing bras. Girls were even comparing their sizes to each other. It was a game that quickly became toxic when girls like me, who were late bloomers, became ashamed of our own bodies because we didn't have boobs like everyone else. I know it sounds lame and I have no idea if this is something that even still happens, but that, the way that affected me, was huge. I still remember when when I got my first boyfriend and he asked me, what's your bra size? And me over here, not knowing any better, with my itty bitty titties, was ashamed to tell him that I wore a double A bra. I had never felt so upset in my entire life up to that point. I felt like I had burdened him with the worst news. And I will never forget that. And from that point on, I felt so ashamed as an eighth grader. I started wearing two padded bras stuffed with socks to school every day. I laugh because honestly, it was really painful. Think about it. As a young kid, you shouldn't have to worry about what other people are as a young kid, you shouldn't have to worry about what other people think of you. I, I don't. I don't agree with that. I, I don't. I, I don't, like this whole idea that like children should live this like blissfully happy life, with absolutely no negative reinforcement about anything ever. We should never make our children sad about anything. Like, come on. You know. Okay. It sucks that like you went through pain because you didn't have like your tits weren't as big as the other girls everybody's got their own insecurities right that you know in my opinion that that sucks for sure you know i'm sure you're over it now so it sounds like she's over it um but whatever man everybody's got their own shit they have to deal with right yours was like that part of your body everyone's got shit like y you want to make it so people aren't allowed to like have a natural preference or, or express that preference because it might hurt some kids feelings Boo fucking who, man? This is the world. Like, what do you what do you expect? You can't like prevent this type of pain from anybody. N nor should you try, right? Pain is like what like you know turns you into a good person at the end of the day. Um, you know, she seems to be doing well. I kind of like her, honestly. She's she's got so much like personality. She's so sassy. Uh, she's so like I don't know. She's very. Um, she she seems to me like a, like she's intelligent. I guess is what I'm trying to say. She's not, you, you normally don't find a girl who's like so good looking. I was going, I almost said so skinny. <laughs> uh, you, you normally don't find a girl who's so good looking and also seems to be intelligent. Um, anyway. Yeah, I still haven't seen her swallow any of the hamburger though. You're thinking about your body, but that was my number one concern. Now, as I grew older, of course, the harassment continued. You're so skinny, don't you ever eat? Oh my gosh, the wind could just blow you away. Look at how small your wrists are. I could just break it. Until finally, I started receiving a new comment. Oh my gosh, you're so thin. You should try modeling. Now this comment that someone else was making about my body wasn't nearly as offensive to me because models are supposed to be pretty, right? I mean, this is a comment that I've heard from a few people now, so I might as well give it a try. So I did, and I loved it. I really, really, really loved it. Because here I was, in a group of women with similar body types to me and similar issues as well, that we were all too ashamed to even admit we had in fear of being judged. So modeling really became my saving grace for a long time. I felt a sense of community there, and I felt like I fit in. Until one day, I decided, I think I want this to be my career. I want to sign with an international modeling agency. I want to be a supermodel. I mean, why not? At that point, I was convinced I had everything that it took and anything was possible. So I had my agent set up a few meetings with big modeling agencies in California and Miami, where I would meet with some of the top agents of the entire world. This is it. This was the moment I was waiting for for years. And I was so happy that I had listened to everyone that told me I needed to be a model because I was tall and thin. I mean, it almost felt like karma for every single person that had made fun of the way I looked. This was my chance to show them I didn't need to be curvy to be beautiful. So my tall ass, waltzes into those agencies looking snatched in my heels, got my hair done and everything, excited that I'm finally going to sign with a top modeling agency, okay? They sit me down, they ask me some questions, they look at my pictures, and I'm just over here anxiously waiting for what they have to say. The agent wraps up the interview and gathers up his things. I'm sitting here about to explode with excitement until he finally says the words, You're too fat. 
You're a size four. I need a size two. I'm sorry, I don't really understand. You need to lose some weight here, 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 and here. And so began my eating disorder. So, um, when I, when I used to work in Houston, uh, I, I worked there twice for two six month periods. The, the second time I went back, I like partnered with my old boss, similar story to Australia, but just different. Anyway, I partnered with my old boss and we opened a couple of kiosks like together, right? I was like, the deal was like, he would put up the money and provide basically everything. And I would just kind of like manage it and run it and make sure like everything ran smoothly. So at one point, um, there were like a lot of, anyway, I, I don't want to get like too into it, but basically there were a lot of like really good salespeople in Houston. And it was, it was a very like established scene for like the like Israeli kiosk world. Um, yeah, anyway, whatever. Uh, so at one point, one of the other managers, he says to me, he's like, Hey, like I got a new, a new girl who's going to come work for you. Right. And he's like, but, but do me a favor. Don't fall in love with her. And he's like, he's like, I'm not joking. I was like, I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. Um, and uh, th this girl comes to work one day and she's like, she's wearing heels, right? She's like, no joke. I'm, I'm like six, like almost six one. She must've been like six four, right? Like towering over me. And uh, anyway, long story short, she was a model, right? And she did the whole like valley girl thing. And a lot of the stuff that she's saying is, you know, I, I remember one time, um, we started dating is the point of the story. I'm like, I'm so distracted thinking about it. Uh, the uh, w one time she said to me, she's like, um, you know, everybody's insecure about their body. Like and she even said, I think something about, cause she had like a small bust also, but she's like, you know, you go like, just because like, you know, you're a model or whatever. And it's just like glamorous lifestyle. And like you think, you know, everybody thinks, you know, that you're like the peak of like physical beauty as a human being you know, all these girls are very insecure. They're all like comparing themselves to each other and they all, you know, wish that they look different or insecure about their bodies. Um, she didn't have an eating disorder though. She ate very well. All right. Order. No, this is the point where I was just damn confused. I had spent my entire life listening to other people complain about how I was too thin. And now I have people on the other end telling me I'm too fat. Which is it? Now I'm not gonna go into too much detail about my eating disorder. I'm just gonna say a few points that I think are important. If you have a friend or a loved one or someone you really care about, it's important that you speak up if you are under suspicion that they have an eating disorder. Because a lot of times people that do have these diseases aren't even aware of it. So it is important that we as a community don't turn a blind eye to eating disorders. Instead, we make it less taboo to talk about. I need to make it extremely clear that recognizing red flags of a disease is not body shaming at all. That is responsibility at its final and I need to thank everyone that checks in with their friends and their family regularly to make sure that they're doing okay. Good for you. Thank you. But telling bitches to eat a fucking cheeseburger never so Recognizing, what you say, signs of a disease is not body shaming. It's... No, wait. Recognizing red flags of a disease is not body shaming. It's uh, pointing out signs that something is wrong or something like that. Okay. I think that's good. That, that's very good. Uh... You know, to her point, like, you know, is she anorexic, this girl? I mean, is she still a model? She's still a model. So, like, you could make the argument that, like, she's doing it for work. Um, uh, you know, like, uh, yeah, I don't know. She seems, like, mentally stable somewhat. Um, but, like, you're going you're gonna to say that on the one hand and then be like, well, I guess telling somebody to eat a cheeseburger is not really constructive criticism. Um, but honestly, who cares? I mean, is this is this for the views? This is like the the social like like this is to get like the you go girl response. Is that what this is? Um, because if that's it, then that's that's very good. But if this is like people on the internet told me to eat a cheeseburger and I'm upset, so I'm gonna pretend like I'm eating a cheeseburger on camera and tell them to stop telling me to eat a cheeseburger because I'm angry. Um, I think that's, uh, I don't know. I think that's kind of dumb. Uh, it's just me. Um, but yeah, pointing out the signs, if there are signs, like that's not body shaming. It, it, when it's, it's, you know, if it's fat people, it's body shaming, right? You know, you point out somebody's fat or getting really fat. Oh, you're body shaming me. No, maybe I'm just pointing out that like you have some unhealthy habits you should probably take care of. You know, is telling somebody to eat a cheeseburger pointing out an unhealthy habit that maybe she should, you know, n not really. It's, I guess you could say, like providing a solution for a perceived problem in a crude way. Um, 
But yeah, I don't know. It's, where are you going with this? Solved anorexia. <laughs> Let me show you a photo of what my body looked like while I had an eating disorder. <laughs> and here's what my body looks like now, fully recovered. <laughs> if that confuses you, there's something you should know. Everyone's body reacts to things differently. Eating disorders don't always look. Also, they like touch up photos afterwards. So like you left that out, but okay. All right. Um, you know, should probably mention that as well. Like sh should like they airbrush the photos afterwards with Photoshop, you know, might want to mention that. Um, yeah, everybody's body reacts differently. Okay, but where are you going with this? The way you think they do. Believe it or not, there are people out there with all different body types suffering from these conditions, not just skinny people. So please don't think that this is an isolated occurrence. Anyone can suffer from these illnesses. And I think it's really important that we spread that awareness because a lot of people tend to forget that. But thankfully I'm here now feeling great sharing the story with you guys, hoping that if someone out there needs help, they'll see this video. I will leave down in the description, a phone number for a hotline. If you just need someone to talk to about it, they're there for you 24 hours a day. And now- in So I, I guess I think, I think what she's saying is that like, um, you can be really skinny and not have an eating disorder. And, and I guess you can be really fat and not have an eating disorder. And you can also be really skinny and have an eating disorder and be really fat and have an eating disorder, right? Like you can be a fat person with anorexia, I guess is what she's saying. Or, and you could be a skinny person with binge eating disorder is the point here, I think. Um, okay, it's a little bit of a flexible definition for that. I understand, I understand like where that's coming from. Um, you know, everybody's body, I guess, does respond differently to, you know, eating food and metabolism and stuff like that. But everybody's body also like, you know, is bound by the laws of physics. So like, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know. In the more present days, it still hasn't ended. With people leaving comments under my Instagram pictures. And with this man that followed me to a gas station and called me a stupid anorexic cunt with his kids in the car. The harassment is real, but the last thing I want to do is sit here and act like I'm a victim because honestly, am I really a victim if we're all victims? Thanks for coming to my mukbang. Mm. I hope you really enjoyed it. It's not telling me to eat a fucking cheeseburger. Oh my God, Kenzie Burke, you got some competition, girl. This is, she's single, this girl, for sure she's single, huh? I think, I think I'm in love. I found my new YouTube crush. Hmm. Natalia Taylor. Hmm. I have a chance, right? I for sure have a chance. I'll just delete all those old videos that I made about like talking shit about people with eating disorders. Just don't, nobody mention that when we get married. Just keep it between us. Um, yeah, okay, harassment, that's not cool. Like, period. That's, that's not, you know, the guy like screaming it that hurt in public in front of his kids that's obviously like deranged behavior unless i don't know did she like almost hit his car or something M maybe that's only half the story like they almost got into a car accident and like he like yelled at her or something called her an anorexic bitch or something it's still not okay but like maybe there's more to the story i don't know regardless um yeah like online harassment quote unquote like when are people going to harass me? When am I going to get harassed? You know, like wh when, because honestly what that tells me, like if people are harassing you online and they're saying negative shit about you online, that means you've made it. Okay. That means like you're actually at the point where people care enough about you to have an opinion, right? The, the, your biggest problem in social media, let's call it is obscurity. If you're obscure, obscure, uh, if you're obscure, and nobody knows who you are, that's a problem. Okay, if people know who you are and they fucking hate your guts, that's not a problem because they know who you are. You know, you can transition that into like your rap career or your fucking cookbook or like, you know, you're like, I don't know, YouTube channel, whatever. So what do I have to do? Hmm, I think I'm on the right track, honestly. Anyway, um, yeah, like, you know, people are harassing you online. I, I don't think that's, it's annoying for sure. And I, I, I see how somebody would take that to heart even when i like you know i'll get i'll get like on my honestly the way that it works what i've noticed is that on my more popular videos i get a lot more negative comments right and i think what happens is like when i when i publish a video it's served to the people who watch my videos regularly and people who watch my videos regularly generally like my videos because they watch them regularly and that's that's why they watch them because they like them so at first you get like a lot of positive comments a lot of likes and stuff like that but then as the video ages um, YouTube starts, if it's popular, starts to serve it to more people, right? And there's, y you run the risk of p 
people not liking it just because when it was initially served, it was served to people who have already like proven that they did like it. Um, so the more popular videos get more dislikes and more negative comments. But even when I get like the negative comments and, and I read them, sometimes like, I don't want to say it like affects me negatively because at the end of the day, I, I it, number one, it helps me, it helps the SEO. Uh, number two, I don't, I don't really care because it's not like, okay, like I read a mean comment on the internet, like I'm never going to meet this person. It's not going to affect my life when I like, go outside and like buy some mango, like who cares? Um, I'm al also not like a famous model. So, you know, maybe I'll care someday. I don't know. I've wanted to make this video for a long time, and I feel like with the whole Eugenia Cooney thing happening right now, the timing couldn't be more perfect to make this point. Harassment never solves anything. Now, love and kindness, you might be onto something there. Shout out to all the women that watch this channel. I just love you guys. I feel like we've developed a really nice community of women on my channel that like to uplift one another without dragging each other down. It's just so refreshing. Thank you. And to the men that watch this channel, can you fix the rest of them, please? I'm just kidding, but am I though? No tea, no shade. I love every single one of you guys, and I hope you enjoyed this video of me ranting to the gods. Leave a comment if you- So harassment never fixed anything um yeah i think i think harassment in the actual definition of the term is because harassment is is one of these terms that um is uh unfortunately has applies to, to many different things now that are, are is it really harassment or is it just saying something that somebody doesn't like right like is it is it like what's har like harassment is like harassing the other person like making a casual comment that somebody should eat a cheeseburger i don't think that that's considered harassment um it might be annoying but is that like is, is that really harassment i don't i don't think so like look up what harassment means that's not actually maybe i should look that up but i always just thought that like harassment was um unwelcome, inappropriate verbal or physical contact or coercive behavior where the behavior is known or reasonably ought to be known to be. Oh, I guess that is harassment then. Uh, I always just thought harassment was like something much more extreme um, because it's got a very extreme connotation. So yeah, I, I guess technically that would be considered harassment, but unfortunately by that definition of harassment, you know, corrective behavior or, or disciplinary action could also be interpreted as harassment. Okay, now obviously I'm not saying you need to discipline like random strangers who are not, you know, your children. Um, but like, and, and I, I think, I think criticism that's not constructive, like, you know, bitch eat a hamburger, you're looking, I can see your ribs. Like, I think just because that's a negative comment, I think that can have a positive effect because it might be a wake up call for that person to like change something, even though it makes them feel pain because pain can be a very strong motivator for actually doing the right thing. So basically the point, what I'm trying to say is that like, I feel like a lot of people these days, you know, in my experience, mainly women, mainly with women with eating disorders. If you say anything, that's not like, we love you, we support you, take your time getting over this, regardless of like how much of a drain it is on your person, your like your friends and family. Um, you say anything other than that, it's harassment because it's unwelcome or unwanted behavior. Yeah, of course it's unwelcome to tell somebody to fucking eat some meat and get over their fucking problem. That's unwelcome. Nobody wants to hear that. But that's that's really like the solution, you know? Like if you look at it from a biological standpoint, like you have you have a member of the tribe that's not eating, the solution to that is to fucking eat, okay? It's not to like trick them into wanting to eat, okay? It's to put food in your mouth, chew and swallow. Okay, so baby girl, I'll support you. I'll support you all night. That was probably harassment. Okay, whatever. Anyway, Natalia Taylor, my new YouTube crush. Kenzie Burke, like I said, you got some competition. Um, interesting. Hmm. I'll never tell you to eat a cheeseburger. Probably. Okay, you guys have any other recommendations for YouTubers or videos that you want me to take a look at? Let me know. Leave me a comment. Peace.